Hello everyone, welcome to another installment of my tutorial regarding webmin. Today we're gonna go for our webmin configuration because that's the only thing that was missing from my um, from all of those uh, things that I've covered at least uh, uh, during this a little uh, chat about webmin functionalities and basics. Uh, next, there's gonna be system, of course, and then we're gonna go on one thing after another. I'm gonna talk about all of them. So let's go to webmin configuration because we have quite a lot of stuff to cover here. Right, so webmin configuration, first thing we have is uh, IP access control. Well, what is actually our IP access control? Because uh, by default webmin will accept connections from uh, any IP address. Uh, even though it is password protected, you should limit access to only legitimate client systems if possible. So um, here we can actually allow IP addresses. So we can allow from all all, all addresses, uh, only allow from listed uh, addresses, and deny from listed addresses. So basically, we can make a list of addresses that will be allowed to enter our webmin. If we click this, for example. And uh, for the purpose of this presentation, I have also my Debian graphical one, graphical Debian. So I'm just going to check what kind of IP address it had. basically doesn't have an IP address I'm gonna need to make a little change because I will see it probably will have to or maybe not bridge the adapter okay perfect let's change that wired connection because I want to actually try to log in from here to my webmin account Okay, so I'm just gonna fast change it. Just a quick test. Everything's fine. All right. So let's open our Firefox. And here we have allowed IP addresses. Well, Let's deny an IP address. So. Resolve host names on every request, yes. Trust IP addresses provided by proxies. Well, actually, yeah, because it depends if you have a proxy set up or not. I don't have it yet. Okay, uh, well, I'll save it and we're gonna check how it actually looks. And see if we will be able, if we are gonna be able to.
yep. as you can see it's not possible doesn't matter if I'm gonna use HTTPS or HTTP Okay, and now let's make a change. Only allow from listed addresses below. So I'm just gonna So now we're gonna check. Let's check by an IP address. Well, there you go. Let's go back here to the admin page. Uh, deny from listed. I'm just gonna copy that. Well, works like a charm. 403 access denied. So, as you can see, IP access control, basic stuff. Nothing, I think, uh, complicated here. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna change to this one. Current IP address would be denied. Sorry about that. Just a quick update. Fine. Okay. Now let's go here. Let's refresh the session. And as you can see, everything is fine. So I'm able to log in from this particular computer. In this case, my graphical Debian. Okay, so let's uh, close this down for a moment. This as well. So this is IP access control. What we can uh, say more about it. Well, of course, what I forgot to mention is that we can as well not only put uh, normal IP addresses, but of course, we can also put networks here. So, if you want to allow the whole network, we would just place something like and then the network. So now we are basically allowing access to every IP address on our net, on our subnet. Or, of course, we can deny everything from a specific subnet. I think uh, they should actually, it's a shame they didn't do like a different uh, boxes here for allow and deny. So we would have like two boxes here, the 
chapter one would be for all the addresses that we want to allow and down, down here we would have all the denied addresses or submits or whatever we want to put so this way you can only control what you want to deny or what do you want to allow well what it is what it is i'm just gonna save it for now let's go to another thing in our configuration which is sports and addresses so webman usually listens for connections on port 10000 on all of your uh, system IP addresses you may need to change the port though perhaps because a firewall on your network only allows connections to web servers on the standard port of ADA and or 443 because port 10,000 can be used by servers or on and by any user it may be possible for a malicious user on your system to wait for webmin to be shut down and then start his own fake, fake webmin server on that part which could capture the admin or root password for this reason you may want to use port below as uh, 10,000, uh, as 1,024. Uh, so basically, uh, here we can change our main port for our webmin, which is 10,000. So everybody who knows that the webmin is on this uh, port when they run a map or whatever and they scan the network. They are looking also for those specific ports, so just remember to change the port. I changed mine to 665. Uh, of course, the first time you want to change your port and to put a specific number below 10, 000, below, below 1000, because they suggest that you should use port 1024. But if you want to use a different port like I did here, you need to add, install additional add-on, like a Perl add-on. But I, I think I showed in one of my previous videos while configuring Webmin and showing different things here. I also showed this how to do it. So I'm not going to go back to it. It's fairly easy. So as you can see, here is the IP address of my server is the port that I chose. If you have more servers, you can always choose a, like a, another server here and just uh, bind, but basically that's binding, binding the port to the IP address. Because so you have only address or you have any address. So I wouldn't suggest this first okay uh, open new ports for uh, on firewall yeah yeah uh, accept ip v6 connections well i have uh, uh, set this to yes listen on broadcast or if you don't listen i got it on don't listen web server host name so workout for browser so this one of course Resolve uh, connected IP addresses, yes. Uh, this is also quite handy. Uh, maximum total concurrent connections. So if you want to uh, like uh, skip any DDoS attacks, like denials of service attacks or whatever, when somebody tries to flood your server with uh, IP connections or, or network connections, you can limit them here. So here's like maximum total concurrent connections, maximum concurrent connections per IP, and of course, maximum concurrent connections per network. So I basically set them all up like I set it like 10, 10, I, you can set it as 10 as well here. I left it for default. Um, okay, and maximum webmin process lifetime. So, well, mine is unlimited. You can have your own set in seconds if you would like to. 
So that's basically ports and addresses. Uh, nothing special here, basic stuff, but pretty handy as well. Okay, next thing on our map is loading logs. Okay, so let's go. So as you can see, well, like most web servers, Webmin can configure been configured to create a log file in the standard in CLF format. The records, uh, the, the, the records every request it receives. As well, it also creates a log of actions performed by, performed by users, such as the creation of a DNS zone or the deletion of a Unix group. This action log can even include the details of every file changed and the command run by each action, so that you can see what Webmin is doing under the hood. Yeah, so basically uh, while setting up uh, this you can uh, have like very specific logs that you can actually uh, look upon later on if you want to see what was going on because you have like webmin action logs so this login is basically connected to webmin action logs which you can later on open and they will be very specific depending on how you actually configure them here so let's see you have the basic webmin logs in var webmin webmin.log And uh, when enabled, logs are written to the var webmin miniserv.log. When login is en logging is enabled, webmin will also write more detailed logs. So the basic logs are here, and the more detailed logs are here when you configure this. So I have it enabled. Log resolved host names. Yes. Use combine log format including referrer and the user agent. No. Periodically clear log files. So I have it set for like 168 hours, which basically is a whole week because 24 hours is one day. So times seven, it's 168 hours. So it's a whole week. So after one week, the log files are being cleaned. So those log files, not these ones. Okay, users to log webmin actions for. So basically here you can pick all of the users you have on your webmin. I have only my root account, but if you have more administrators working on the server, you can always put them here and you can then check specific log on those those guys what they were doing and what they messed up messed up if they if they messed up something so if you're looking for somebody uh, to blame and uh, you know that somebody fucked up something you can always find it thanks to this setting and thanks to the action logs okay modules to log webmin actions in and that's the stuff about the modules that you have installed on your webmin so you can basically pick all of them all of them by control a or you can just uh, pick specific ones so only log actions in and then just click this whichever like module is going to be picked like cron jobs or whatever or you can just uh, change it to log actions in all modules so all modules are going to be included in the logs which is going to be a pre pretty hefty log include webmin logins and logouts in action logs yeah log scheduled functions no log changes made to the files by each action well i could take that to see yes Record IO modified files before actions for rollbacks. No. Permission for log file is default. Also, log webmin actions uh, to syslog. That's not necessary to be set, so save it. So basically, this is logging. If we go now to action logs. 
So uh, at any time in any module, in a specific module, let's say now going DNS server. Let's search, we're gonna see what we have. Okay, so we have the time, the date, the client from IP address, the module that was used, the user that logged in, and what will be done. So we have here like descriptions, description, create what was being done on, the, on this particular action, uh, webmin module, so the user, the ID of the session, date, time, what kind of script, script was generated, and the basic IP address from which the user uh, logged into webmin. Okay, so now we're gonna go to proxy servers and download. So to cover this, we would need actually to um, install ourselves a proxy server. So I think the best option here would be to install a squid proxy server, because I think that's the most known proxy server if it goes to a webmin so you can do it either from from here you got here squid proxy server or you can do it from the command line uh, on your debian server which i'm gonna do because i'm gonna use my command line to install squiddy okay so Let's open the server and first of all we're just gonna do underscore release minus a okay now we're gonna do Install our squid. If you're not familiar with squid, squid proxy, there's quite a lot of materials on the internet about it. In the video description, I'm gonna leave some links that you can check later on. regarding this proxy right so basically now we have our squid installed let's go to our webman refresh the modules because that's what we need to do after each install of a new module of servers we have to wait it's still refreshing we got our squid proxy server. Stop this server for now. I'm gonna take a moment. As you can see, we already have a user called proxy once we actually installed squid. Okay, the service is stopped. Now initialize cache. Now we're gonna return to our squiddy. Okay. Let's go back to command prompt. Oh, sorry, the terminal actually. Start squid. Okay. Now we 
again check. Oh, everything is up and running. That's good. Okay, so now if you want to make any changes to this quick proxy and set it up, you can either do it, of course, through the terminal. So um, I'm going to show you two ways how to do it. The first way, of course, by the terminal. So you need to go to, let's see, squid. And as you can see, we have here squid.conf. So if we open the file, it's quite an extensive file, to be honest. But uh, we are looking here only for a specific thing. Basically, this this is what was supposed to be interesting for all the people that want to make any kind of changes to this squid environment. So insert your own roles here. So basically, from here you're gonna insert insert all all the roles regard, regarding the proxy server. Of course, sometimes uh, you need to also make some changes at the end of this files like i said it's quite extensive so it's better to use some kind of search mechanism because you can get lost here quite easily If we open webman, we have the same file here, so edit configuration file. So basically, if you open this, that's the same thing. So it depends who likes it, how. If you would like to change something here, you can do it here. It's a bit easier because you have this ability to actually, you can even see the lines here, the line numbers. So that's quite handy if you of course use vim you will also have line numbering so it depends on you how you want to do it okay so basically when we are running this uh, squid uh, let's start with like a basic setup for it So uh, first of all, what we need to do, we actually will need to go here to our proxy and let's start with the ports and networking. So as you can see, the default port for the squid is 3128, so it runs on this port. Here you would need to specify the IP address of your server. So mine is this. Okay, basically you can leave all of the other things as they are. You can, of course, specify another port here because uh, uh, if it goes to squid, uh, it has like ports 8000 and, and the default port can be also port uh, 8080. So if you would like to connect on a, on a different port, let's say 8000, you can also do it like this and then specify it for your course IP address. 
or you can change it to 1880, right? So all depends on you what kind of port you would like to have. I'm for now leaving it for on a default port. SSL addresses and ports default. If you changed anything, you need to do the list below and then change it here, of course. Mm, all right. So let's save it. Another thing that's uh, quite important is cache options. So let's go to cache options here. Because to be honest, um, depends on uh, on the machine that you're going to be running this uh, proxy on. Because if you would like to have a proxy server, uh, would be good to dedicate the most of the machines virtual space for the proxy because thanks to that it's going to be very fast the bigger the cache the faster everything goes so the more space for the cache you will leave the faster everything is going to work so i think i will actually change this to about 8000 on my server I'm gonna leave those on default. As you can see, you have like DNS lookup cache time, you can change it. Connection timeouts, you can change them as well here. Mm, site selection timeouts, max client connection time. How much time does a client have to actually connect to your proxy server? quite a lot of nice things here you can customize them as you want as you wish maximum cache time also in seconds all right so that's how we're gonna set it up for now okay next thing would be access control Let's go to access control. As you can see, uh, maybe I'm gonna just come back for a moment to the cache, cache options, because I, I wanted also add something else. Because um, okay. Um, in the default configuration, Squid uses a single directory for storing cache pages. The most 100 megs of data will be stored in this directory, which is not likely to be enough if serving a large number of active clients. If your system has more than one hard drive, it makes sense to spread the cache across multiple disks to improve performance. This can be done by specifying multiple directories, each with its own maximum size. On a system that is dedicated to running a proxy server, the maximum amount to cache in each directory should be about 90% of the available space. So just remember if you're actually creating your own proxy server, don't use all use up all of the space. It's like they say here, 90%, not, no, not more than that. It is unwise to configure or allow Squid to use up all free disk space, as many file systems suffer reduced performance when nearly full. Exactly. So that's the only thing I wanted to add about cache. Okay, so let's go to access control. Now we're in access control. So we have like here a ACLs. What is an ACL? ACL it's just a, 
it's called uh, ACL list. Basically, it's an uh, access control list. Access control lists are possibly Squid's most powerful feature. An ICL is simply a test that is applied to a client request to see if it matches or not. Then based on the ACLs that each request matches, you can choose to block it, prevent caching, force it into a delay pool, or hand it off to another proxy server. Many different types of ACLs exist. For example, on type checks on client's IP address, another matches the URL being requested, while others check the destination port, web server hostname, authenticated users, and so on. The most common use of ACLs is blocking connections from clients outside your network. If you run a proxy server that is connected to an accessible connected to and accessible from the internet hosts outside your local network should not be allowed to use it. Malicious people often use other proxies to launder connections used for hacking, sending spam or accessing websites that they shouldn't be allowed to. Exactly. So, uh, as you can see, we already have some stuff set up here. That's like the basic rules when you install the Squid proxy. You get all of the, all of these, which of course can be found in the configuration file. Maybe I will just jump for a moment to this config file because it's gonna get a little bit faster. Uh, yeah. So all the white stuff here is the things that are being actually used. So there you go, safe ports, SSL ports, At the moment, we have HTTP access denial, so basically, every everybody are denied. The only person allowed is a local host. And here are all the rules that I showed you in a, like a minute ago. So, local net LAN. All the basic uh, sources, like uh, for example, this web source, uh, ports, of course, SSL ports, as you can see, HTTP, AFTP, HTTPS, and others. So that's just like the default stuff. Right, let's go back here. Okay. So let's uh, actually make uh, a test here. Let's try to, because uh, uh, maybe I will try to show you as well something else. Because if you are on a PC, you would like to use this proxy that you set up here. What you would need to do is you have to go to the control panel. You would need to open the web. Internet options. Here you need to go to connections. LAN. And here. In proxy server you need to add your proxy server so let's add mine so it's gonna be IP address of course of my Debian server you change the port 
I don't remember what is this. Twenty-eight. Okay, here you need to, of course, change it as well. 43, 2, 3, 6. And now, if we go with OK, our internet connection is going to be changed and we are going to be routed to the proxy, which I'm not going to do right now because all of my uh, webmin is going to be probably um, shut down because I didn't uh, add anything in the ACL. So access control list wasn't made like it should be. So if I did it right now, I wouldn't be, uh, basically my access would, would be denied through the proxy to probably all of the existing websites uh, just to be internet access okay so let's uh, start let's add some uh, ACLs okay so basically what we need to do at the beginning we'll just go out of here let's check sorry Okay, we need to make a file, so I'm gonna call it allow Okay, because uh, in this text file we're going to add some stuff that we're actually going to use. Let's just close it down and first ACL we're going to actually create is going to be client address. Let's pick client address, create a new ACL. ACL name, here I'm going to actually choose, let's say, Proxynet. So that's gonna be the name of my internet, Proxynet. And uh, next, uh, what I gonna have? One I'm gonna actually use here. Uh, so IP address. from an IP address so maybe first we're gonna choose separate file and we're gonna choose the file and the file is gonna be the one that we actually created so at C squid and here allowed allow txt txt okay so um, here we can specify an IP address that's going to be allowed to access so I'm gonna add of course my IP address I just have to check now it's like that okay and the net mask We'll check if it's actually 
a valid to put the net mask or is it just needed to we'll see in a moment ACL file already exists mm -hmm, okay Client address. All right. Okay, so let's do it like this client address. Call proxy net, and we are just gonna put in our. Maybe actually, I'm gonna instead of my um, computer's IP address, I'm gonna use the IP address of this graphical DPL. That's gonna be our lab rat. Okay. Right, separate file. Of course, again, we need to choose the file that we created. So, allow. Yeah, okay. Right, so still something. Okay, so I guess I'm just gonna do it the old fashioned way. So we need to open our config file. We need to add here some stuff. Okay. So let's start with ACL proxy net source. And the source file is going to be, of course, let's see. Okay, ACL block terrain. There is going to be another file which is going to be called the block. We need to, of course, provide that as well. So we need to use touch and create it like we created the allow text. Next ICO authority proxy authentication. Here we're gonna add the addresses for the proxy authentication. So each time somebody actually connects to our proxy, he will need to use a certain username and password to access the internet. Okay, so And 
next we're gonna do HTTP access deny connect SSL ports Allow. Local text manager. HTTP access deny. Next HTTP deny approximate block. So we're just going to read from the um, this is going to read from the block text. Uh, not txt http access allow authentication okay and now what we need to do is we need to do http access allow we need to change local host to of course the name of our Internet so proxy net right here we still have HTTP access deny all which is gonna be left should be like that we're just gonna add HTTP access allow Local, just right. Okay, so now let's just check if it's gonna blow. We're gonna restart the configuration after that we're gonna check if everything is fine with system CTL status if something's wrong in the config then of course the service won't start but fortunately always writes what is not configured wrong or well, something's configured not how he wants to all right, so let's check status, and I probably know what. What do we have here? ACL of proxy authentication. Yeah, I can't use proxy authentication because no authentication scheme schemes are fully configured. All right, so that's why. Well, then we need to configure them. Let's see what we have here actually in our access control right now. Okay. So we need to actually create or also block dot txt ch mod Oh, 
right so i think we have all the we have all of the requested files right now we just need to configure the authentication okay so we need to go to our proxy authentication so let's go out of here oh wait a second Some things misspelled here. Authentication. I think it should be like this. Okay. Right. So let's check our proxy net. Okay, so our proxy net should have a IP address here. Okay, so because we need to provide here from which IP address we are going to be connecting to our proxy. So this is the IP address of my graphical DB. And here I can just add another address, which is going to be the address of my PC and here if you would like to you can always do it like let's say you want to add all of the existing computers on a subnet so all you need to do is basically this and then netmask mm, okay so I guess it was without the 24 only the oh maybe not Right. Actually, it should be specified. Let's say that we would like to specify. Of course, local host, not a valid network. Okay. Oh, if he doesn't like this, then he probably like it like that. Yeah. So if we actually change this for the whole subnet, now we have the whole subnet as allowed. So all the IP addresses from this subnet will be able to connect to our proxy server of course when they are going to provide when the users are going to provide the username and password then they are going to be uh, able to log in so that's just an example because you can of course uh, change this for example like you want to just specify an IP range so you could even do it like that from this IP to let's say this IP so now the computers in this IP range from 1 to 10 are gonna be allowed to enter to your proxy so there are different different options here that you can actually do and we're just gonna scratch this because I only want my my own PC and my Debian graphical Debian to be allowed another nice thing that you can add 
if you go to block because you can of course here you can uh, define which uh, IP addresses are going to be blocked and you can also define a failure URL so if we go to let's say So open Firefox. This is not, still not going through the proxy, of course. So nothing's happening here. Let's say uh, Mountains and hills, that's a great one. Right. Okay. There's like a few sites that you can use, that you are, URLs you can actually use. Um, I will check mine, which I actually had. I'm gonna use this one. Let's do HTTPS. No server domain is given. Oh, right, of course. So I will need to actually change this one as well. So let's say we want to block Facebook. Facebook.com. We want to block, block Instagram. We want to block what else? On the black marble and DC. I don't remember what was the actual DC Comics website. Well, I'm just gonna leave it at this for now. Okay, so let's plug this. So basically, here you're allowing all the IP addresses and the IP address ranges. Here you're blocking all the websites that you want your user not to, users not to enter. Uh, yeah, and uh, here is gonna be set the authentication. So uh, in a moment we're gonna go to this one. I will just go to the block. I will copy this. Turn to ACLs. Let's go to Proxynet, and let's choose the same one. In case of any failures, All right? And now authority ACL. This one as well. And this one, authority ACL, I'm not going to put in a separate file. This one is going to be actually in the squid configuration file. So, as you can see in the authority, we have two IP addresses that I've added. Just going to save this. 
And basically that's all for ACLs for a, for a moment. Because if you go to actually once again access control proxy restrictions, as you can see, because uh, when you actually uh, create an ACL, then you need to go to proxy restrictions. Because you need to set up this uh, ACL, because at the end of everything you have deny all, so nothing can be beneath that, beneath this. You have to have all of your look at this as a firewall with these rules. All the rules have to be here, and deny all is always at the end, so nothing can be beneath the denial. So if we add a proxy restriction, here you have all of your lists. So we have like block, authority, proxy net. And here you either choose allow or, or deny. And of course, as you can see here, we have our proxy net on allow because we want to actually allow our users that are uh, linked to proxynet in the allow.txt to use our proxy so it's gonna be allow we need to allow uh, authentication through username and password so this is also set to allow and we want to deny uh, all of the use you all of the websites that are listed in the block txt file so it's going to be denied for proxynet block because it's reading from the block txt file okay now if we actually open the files let's say just for a moment you can see there are all the websites that we added. In the allow list, there's going to be IP addresses, IP addresses, range, ranges, and stuff like that. I'm not going to talk about uh, IC, ICP restrictions because that's another cake. External, external ACL programs proxy restrictions. If you want to read about those, like I said, I'm gonna link below some materials regarding proxy squid and you can just play with it. The best way to learn stuff about it. Okay, let's go back. So now we're gonna need to, of course, uh, finish our authentication because otherwise our service won't start. So we need to go to proxy authentication. Let's find now proxy authentication, authentication programs. We need to actually go here. And you will need to take this on because it's web window also. What this actually does, actually, uh, this authentication has a default uh, webmin authentication box for username and password. So if you want to take this, your authentication won't work and you will receive an error like I did trying to restart the service. So you need to pick this as an as a default webmin uh, authentication program specified for this squid proxy server module. If you of course have your own, you can pick your own from the disk. So for now let's save it. So this stuff is set. Of course, if we have this module, we need to have a proxy authentication user because every user that is going to be on the net that wants to actually use the proxy and go to the internet needs to 
from now on use the username and password so let's set up username and password create okay and after we actually created the user the user need to go here so module configuration we need to change this to system configuration or actually first one the options and we need to check as you can see update proxy users when updating system users and read proxy users when reading system users so I will change this to yes I will save it now we would need to go to web main users let's open a root user I'm gonna do save okay so uh, actually system we have users and groups here as well well I think there is nothing here so let's go back to our module Okay, so I think it's gonna be all. I think it should be all. So, okay, let's try to start this query. right so still he has some kind of problem let's see no i have a misspelling here http Across. Okay, so we need to go back to our config file. Let's save this. And let's see. Now I think everything should be running. And it's fine. Alright, so everything seems to be working. Now let's go to our graphical Debian. And let's make some adjustments. Because we actually need to set the proxy server.
answer and there you go now we are being requested for the username and password to enter internet so Let's open Facebook. Okay, so if we go back to our proxy servers and downloads, from here, of course, the web configuration. So if you have your proxy squid, squid proxy setup, like I showed you, you can always use this feature. Uh, if you would like to use it with HTT for HTTP, then you would need to put something like this. So the name of your server, of course, and the port. The port can be, of course, 3128, it can be 8000, like uh, I told you, it can be 8080, depends on which kind of port do you, you have set up on the squid proxy. The same goes for, from, for here, of course. If you want to have um, some clients uh, excluded from the proxy, you can do it, or you can have domains excluded as well. Let's say this, for example. So name the domain or a certain uh, IP address or even the subnet, uh, of course. If you have authentication configured for Squid Proxy, like I showed you, for uh, authenticating when you're entering internet, uh, then you need to put it as well here. So I had it done. So. And that's basically it for this uh, th this additional stuff for proxy servers and downloads if it goes to downloading let's go here here we have uh, things like you can uh, cache downloaded files do you want to uh, uh, have this cache yes or no uh, for how lo how long the cache should be what's the maximum time to cache the files so if you remember when we configured square proxy with proxy we uh, entered 168 uh, days um, sorry it wasn't uh, days 168 days it was I think uh, um, hours it was hours 100 uh, 168 hours uh, which was seven days so basically here you would have to put seven days sorry seven days so it would match the squid proxy because 24 hours times 7 is 168 hours so 7 days uh, of course uh, caching uh, do caching in modules of course you can uh, take all modules so control a right, all right all modules all just selected modules so we can just click for example uh, bind dns server and and that's it, I think. Uh, of course, you, you have uh, also here the button, clear the cache. So I think that's uh, all if it goes to proxy servers and downloads. Um, yeah, since this video was quite long and extensive, I think I will end here. Uh, if you have any kind of questions about the uh, squid proxy, how to set it up, all the rules, if you would like to play with it, uh, setting up uh, things like, for example, excluding um, different, uh, let's say, uh, prefixes. You want to exclude from downloading something that has exec in it or like um, different extensions, PDFs, whichever, you know, torrents or something. You can always look up uh, stuff on the internet. I will also leave in the description of this video some links that I found that can be uh, of use. Um, I've tried to change a little bit my squid proxy here because I was testing it and I was trying to block different things with it. Uh, with extensions it's not so easy as it looks. Uh, on the internet you can find quite a lot of information about it but some stuff that I've tested didn't work at all. Uh, if it goes to blocking torrents it's almost impossible. So um, you can, of course, try it on your own, but uh, don't be surprised if it doesn't work. <laughs> okay, so basically uh, that's it. 
maybe uh, in the not so far future I will just do a, a different video, a separate video just for squid proxy configurations. Um, so we can actually check that, that out. Okay, thanks for tuning in and uh, I will see you soon.